How you doing? Todd Hodge here from Team Losi Racing and Horizon. Today I'm going to tell you about the new Team Losi Racing 84.0 Nitro Buggy Kit. Here we have it, <clears throat> our new 84.0 Nitro Buggy Kit. Um, there was some uh, sneaks uh, over the past week or so, um, and today we're going to sit there and tell you all about this exciting new product from Horizon Hobby. So let me get into it. First off, we have the the biggest change that we made to this car was the offset drivetrain. Um, and what we did with the drivetrain is we essentially moved over the radio tray, we moved over the engine, and when we did that, it allowed us to move over the center diff. And when we moved over the center diff, um, it allowed us to induce angle in the rear drive shaft and take out some angle in the front drive shaft. And what that allows the car to do is have a more balanced uh, power bias. So before, a lot of people would say, hey, the, the TLR 8 scale, it's a little bit hard to drive. It kind of drives like a two-wheel car. Um, and the reason for that was is the, the rear drive shaft was perfectly straight right to the rear gearbox. And then the front drive shaft had a lot of the um, exaggerated angle on it, which is why you would see your uh, front center um, out drive um, actually um, wear the pin on the dog bone quite a bit because there's so much bind there on that front end. Well, on this car, during testing, we found that uh, by changing the power bias from the front to rear, actually really balanced the car out, both on low speed tracks and you know European high speed tracks. So with this car, um, the rear drive shaft has angle in it now, and then the front drive shaft has less angle. So when you look at that, you wonder, well, how did, how did Team Losi do that without making the car wider? Well, like I said earlier, we moved the engine over, moved the radio tray over. Um, we made new dirt guards or uh, mud guards for the chassis. And you'll notice in, in some uh, pictures here, we'll show you in a little bit, the, um, the chassis width is exactly the same. Um, which is why we're actually able to use the um, current 8 3.0 cab forward body. And I'll get into some more details on this one in a little bit. So some other changes that we made um, on the car in the, in the center section is we made a larger footprint um, engine mount. And anybody who uses a stock engine mount may notice that there's a lot of flex there. So we made the footprint a lot larger to basically give you less chassis flex. Um, a lot of guys use the quick release mount on there, but for the, for the average guy who doesn't want to spend the money on that quick release mount, we made the footprint a lot larger um, to basically stiffen up the chassis and avoid any cracks in the chassis between the, um, between the flywheel hole and the uh, engine mount. Uh, so moving on, some other changes we made to the center of the chassis. <clears throat> we have the new uh, throttle actuator that actually has 3 30 seconds by 3 16 by 3 30 second um, bearings installed into the um, brake side and the throttle side. What this eliminates, it eliminates all the slop on your throttle side and your brake side. So you're going to have more responsive uh, throttle um, and more, more responsive brake. Another change we made is a new uh, throttle brace, throttle actuator brace that goes from the throttle actuator to the center diff case. And the whole goal with this was to improve our braking in hot conditions. So, you know, when it's hot out, 90, 100 degrees, you're outside racing, long main event, everything gets soft. You know, your wings are softer, your arms are softer, everything flexes more. Well, we noticed that as soon as we put this brace on here, the braking was a lot more consistent and the braking stayed the same throughout the whole run. So that's a big reason we did that new throttle brace. Some other changes we made is we added new uh, center boots to the uh, to the uh, to the drivetrain. So we have a center boot on the rear and a center boot on the front. What's nice about these little center boots is that it actually enables you to put grease in there, and the grease doesn't fling everywhere. So now we're going to move on to the front suspension changes uh, that we made on the Team Losi Race in 8.4.0. Uh, some of these changes include. Uh, some very small ones and some big ones. Uh, one of the small ones that we made is we updated the Ackerman screws. Now the Ackerman screws actually have a, uh, a rounded edge on them where the bearing sits and <clears throat> what that does is it allows the um, Ackerman bar to kind of float on the, on the steering bell cranks. And what that helps is when your servo saver gets engaged, it allows a little bit of movement of that Ackerman bar to where your steering stays free all the time. So pretty much you probably won't notice it just driving around the track, 
but it's just kind of an improvement on just the durability of the car to kind of update those Ackerman screws. Uh, moving on, next we have the, um, we made some updates to the front of the uh, car. Uh, we molded new caster blocks, which we still have 15 degree caster blocks. And then we also changed the spindle. Um, the big change on the spindle was you actually can adjust the height of the spindle now. So you can go from a, a low setting, which is stock, like on the A3.0, or you can go to a high setting. And these are all done via the spacers. You just shift the spacers around to go between low and high. The kit setup is with low, so <clears throat> give high a try. Now what, what is the high going to do? The high position is going to essentially <clears throat> give you less dog bone plunge. And what that is going to do with less dog bone plunge, it's going to help your car go through the bumps more uh, better. It's also going to um, give the front end a little bit more suspension movement because you don't have that dog bone bind because there's less dog bone plunge. So another thing you want to think about too is when you change that, obviously you're going to be moving the axle up in the car. You're going to have to readjust your down travel through your droop settings. So just keep that in mind when you're making that change and testing that out. Okay, moving on to some of the other changes, we'll go into the front shock tower. So the front shock tower, you can see here, it has a lot of different, um, slightly different uh, aesthetics to it. Um, still focused on durability, still your standard four millimeter 7075 T6. Uh, on the shock mounts, we added another hole, but now all the holes, call them three quarter holes. So they're all connected, um, they're three quarter holes, so you can slide the uh, shock mount in and out quickly um, and kind of get that three quarter location in between um, versus a, a hole, an entire hole setting. Um, and we'll show you pictures here shortly on that. And then on the front camber links, uh, we added, so the, on the 3.0, it had the inside two holes. We, um, we basically kept those inside two holes, but then added a hole right in the middle with that three quarter hole I was talking about, like on the shock tower and then it still has the uh, same outer hole. So a little bit more finer adjustments on the, uh, on the front shock tower. Kind of moving on to uh, some of the other changes. Uh, we also have new um, boots so that you can um, cover your uh, CVAs. So the beauty about that is these boots now keep everything contained in there, keep the grease in there. Um, your, your parts should wear a lot less, so that should help just with longevity of the car. Uh, moving on to the shocks, pretty much it's the same shock as the uh, 3.0, same piston, same shock shaft, same springs. Um, we did do a couple updates to the uh, shock caps. We now have bleeder caps via a small button head screw. And we also include the um, bladders and then what, what we're calling the emulsion o-ring. And the emulsion o-ring allows you to take the bladder out, put the emulsion o-ring in, so you'll get this, the good quality seal, but then it becomes an emulsion shock rather than a bladder compensated shock. Another change we made is we made the shock bushings, rather than them staying on the shock mount when you service the car, they actually snap into place on the, on the shock eyelet. And what that does, it basically just improves the durability of the car over time. Dirt doesn't get in between the shock bushing and the um, shock eyelet, which you know would cause wear on your shock eyelet. So some small subtle changes that are pretty impactful. Um, especially to you know some of the more uh, budget-minded consumers. Uh, another thing I like to talk about, so we made some updates to the um, gearbox. One simple update: we added a bearing spacer in between on the on the pinion gear between the two bearings that go in there. So that allows you to basically put the pinion in, put the coupler in, and just you don't have to worry about setting too much mesh in there. You just basically push them together, tighten down the set screw, and it spins free. You don't have to worry about pushing on the coupler too much and then tighten the set screw and managing your backlash. Um, next up, another simple change we did that we added to the car is the 8E bumper. Um, it's a little bit larger bumper and it's also rounded. Uh, what's nice about that rounded side of it is the fact that it actually goes through the bumps. If, you, if you're on a really rough track, the original eight bumper would had that kind of square hard edge on it. The rounded bumper just makes transitioning through bumps and rough sections of the track a lot smoother. All right, so now moving on to the rear suspension of the 8.4.0. Uh, again, some more refinements on this. We have a new rear hub. Um, the new rear hub incorporates a larger outer bearing. So we went to a much larger outer bearing, which is an eight by 16 bearing now. 
uh, compared to the smaller bearing before that would tend to get gritty um, relatively quick. Uh, so we saw a lot of, we've seen a lot of success with that out on the track, just a lot more durability with that bigger bearing. Uh, some other changes we made, kind of like the front gearbox, um, we, we added the, the uh, pinion spacer in there. So again, you don't have to worry about setting your, your play on the, uh, on, the, on the pinion gear. Um, just tighten down the set screw on the coupler and go. Um, one thing I forgot to mention, the larger bearing that we actually have on the rear hub, we also actually have that on the front spindle too. So now in all four corners, the, outer, the outside bearings are eight by 16. Uh, as far as the shock package, everything pretty much remains the same, except for like the front, we have the bleeder screws. Um, with the choice of either the um, bladder compensated shock package or the emulsion o-ring uh, and then it also has the um, the pressed in the, the attachable uh, shock bushings um, to the shock cap and then also on the rear end we updated the uh, rear low roll center pivot so before in order to get four degrees of anti squat you had to run a high roll center pivot in the front and then a low roll center pivot in the back well, now we, we updated that. The full low roll center package, you're able to get to your, um, to your four degrees of anti-squat just with the stock pivot. So you don't have to worry about buying that high roll center pivot to get to your additional anti-squat. Uh, just like the front end, we also have the new axle boots on there, which um, obviously prevent dirt and debris getting inside there and wearing out your couplers. So a nice added little feature. And then finally, the rear shock tower. Much like the, the front shock tower, refined um, adjustments in the rear end, or I'm sorry, on the shock mounts. The shock mounts allow you to have the, the three quarter holes, so you can go through three different positions, all relatively close. Um, the big change is on the camber link side. So on the, the 3.0, we had the three separate holes. On this one, we did the two inner holes, got rid of the third outer hole, but then made the vertical adjustment through the three quarter holes. So you basically, you have the top holes, which are the same as the 3.0, but then you can go down the three quarter hole in two different positions to get more camber gain in the rear end. We knew a lot of guys were drilling out their camber links to get that lower camber position um, on the track. So to complete the package with the 8.4.0, uh, probably the most important to a lot of people is the body got to have a cool looking body. So we chose to use the uh, cab forward body. Uh, this is essentially the same cab forward body as the 3.0, although there is a new part number. Now you may be asking yourself, why is there a new part number? It's the same body. Well, that's because since we moved the engine over to the left, we actually had to shift this hole over. So this new part number reflects the engine hole shifting over. So if you have an uh, A3.0 cab forward body, it still fits. It's just not as a clean, clean of a fit. Um, the engine hole will actually just be shifted over more towards the center. So just kind of give you guys a heads up on that. Um, as far as the wing, it's the same wing as the 3.0, so still the larger wing that we originally created on the 3.0 with the two different wicker bills. And then also we also include the quarter inch and half inch uh, wing spacers to move the wing further back on the car. So what else is new on this? Well, that pretty much sums up all the new parts um, on the car. Um, I'll just go over a little bit of the option parts that are included with the car. Um, the option parts include all the adjustable hinge pin braces with all the different pills so you can get your different kick in the front end or you can get your different toe in or anti-squat in the rear end. Uh, other um, option parts, just like the 3.0, we got the lightweight outdrives, front, center, and rear and we also have the uh, lightweight 48 tooth spur gear. Um, some other ones are the uh, TLR capped hard anodized wheel nuts and uh, pretty much a no-brainer to put in all our TLR kits are the ti titanium carbon nitrided uh, uh, hinge pins and shock shafts. So I know since we went to those uh, that coating we, it has eliminated all our problems with any of the coating coming off allows for a really smooth uh, suspension package all around. So that pretty much sums up the 8.4.0. Uh, really looking forward to get this car out on the track and uh, out to the market. And uh, we we'll hope to see you at the track and best of luck to you. Thanks.